Here's something that we don't talk about very often, how Tesla is taking control of their own resource extraction. And by that, we mean actually running the mining operations that produce the metals like nickel that the company requires to build their products. In today's case, we are going to be focusing specifically on materials to make the 4680 battery cell. We know that Tesla is going to be ramping up their capacity to manufacture these very large high nickel content cells. And over the next couple of years, they're going to start spinning out multiple terawatt hours worth of battery capacity annually. That is a lot of batteries, and that means a lot of nickel is going to be used. We also know that Tesla prefers to operate their company with vertical integration. That means from the ground up. The company takes charge of their own materials and components and software that go into their product. And when we look at the 4680 cell as a product, that vertical stack extends down all the way into the literal ground where the metals are extracted and refined. We've known for a while now that Tesla is getting into the mining industry, but a recent article from the New York Times in their Race to the Future series has opened up a ton of new details on just what Tesla is up to on the island of New Caledonia in the South Pacific, and how the company is trying to expand their mission of sustainability and environmental protection to mining the largest nickel reserve on planet Earth. It is really interesting stuff, I promise. So let's get going. So first off, all credit is due to the New York Times for putting in the work to flesh out this story. It's a good read, but it is also very long and behind a paywall, and the Times didn't do a very good job of promoting the story, so no one seems to be talking about it. Hopefully they don't sue me for borrowing their information. Nobody tell the New York Times about this. Anyways, the location of Tesla's nickel mine is New Caledonia. It's an island that lies in between Australia and Fiji. And more specifically, we are talking about an area at the southern tip of the island called Goro. This is the largest nickel mine on New Caledonia, an island that holds one quarter of the world's nickel reserve. That is very important to remember. This little sliver in the Pacific Ocean may hold up to one quarter of all the nickel that is available to be mined on the planet. Tesla wants to use this opportunity to take control of their supply chain and ensure the minerals used in their cells are mined in both an environmentally and socially responsible way. This is the largest effort by a Western electric vehicle maker to directly source mineral assets. Of course, we know that this is one of the great paradoxes for electric cars. By choosing to drive an EV instead of a gasoline vehicle, we are reducing our own personal carbon emissions by a huge margin. It's a clean, sustainable method for transportation. But the process of extracting the ingredients that make up that electric car is basically the exact opposite. It's dirty, environmentally destructive, and politically fraught. Because of the nickel mining industry in New Caledonia, the island has become one of the world's largest carbon emitters per capita. But it doesn't have to be that way, or at least Tesla doesn't think so. And that's what the company is going to be trying to prove as they tackle this new venture. Elon Musk secured a deal in October 2021 to directly purchase up to one third of Goro's nickel production over the next five years. In their sustainability report on the Goro mining project, Tesla writes that by working directly with a mine rather than buying nickel from a middleman, the company could, quote, address sustainability issues such as biodiversity impact, energy consumption, human rights, and tailings management. Tesla works directly with mineral producers and refiners that are aligned with our mission and are committed to supplying sustainably and responsibly sourced materials, the report said. If there is anywhere in the world that Tesla can pull this off, New Caledonia is probably the place, but it won't come easy. There is a lot of bad history that they need to get past first. New Caledonia itself is currently still a French territory, though it was actually named by the explorer James Cook, who first spotted the land in 1774 and thought it looked like Scotland. 
There are dozens of small islands that make up the territory, but we are just focusing on the primary island known as Grand Terre. That basically just means big land in French. New Caledonia is the product of French colonialism, which is something the nation was really into throughout the late 19th century. They'd basically just sail around the world, landing in new places and declaring that they were now the property of France, to which the locals of that place would be like, I don't know what you're saying, please leave. But the French would not leave, instead they would enslave the local population and commit terrible acts of human cruelty for decades to come. It was bad, and it wasn't just the French that were doing this. Anyways, skipping ahead to present day, now with a population of 270,000 people, New Caledonia remains a French overseas territory, which means it is actually a European nation, and accordingly is bound by rigorous European environmental and labor standards. Things have come a long way since nickel mining began on the island using slave labor in the 1850s. Other major nickel producers like Indonesia and the Philippines have comparatively loose regulations and even looser oversight, which means they can produce nickel far more cheaply than New Caledonia. And to compete against these low-cost rivals, New Caledonia is now positioning itself as a supplier of top-grade nickel for rechargeable batteries rather than the cheaper product that is mostly used for stainless steel. This gives New Caledonia a unique opportunity to lead the way in setting global standards for the electric vehicle revolution. If companies want the best quality nickel and therefore the most energy dense battery cells, then they need to buy it the right way. The current government of New Caledonia is led by a coalition representing the indigenous peoples known as Kenex, alongside generations of European settlers and newer French arrivals, as well as Asians and Pacific Islanders who came to work the mines. The government is also eager to protect local rights. In an interview, the nation's president, Louis Mapu, said, quote, New Caledonia, in its way of exploiting its ore, is perceived as a country which contributes to the fight against global warming. We have very high production costs in New Caledonia, it is true, but we respect human rights, respect the rights of local people, and respect the environment. Okay, now that we have our setting fleshed out, we can get into the actual mining business that Tesla is involved in here. Because that's not a simple story either. Obviously, Tesla is not the first to come to this area with high hopes for securing unlimited supplies of resources. Some of the world's biggest nickel miners have tried to profit at Goro and failed. Goro's previous owner, the Brazilian mining giant Vale, was actually desperate to rid itself of the mine. Tensions over who would buy the nickel processing plant led to protests that forced Goro to shut down for months. The conflict even triggered the fall of New Caledonia's government in early 2021. That led to the existing coalition government under President Mapu, the first Kanak leader of the nation, who said in an interview, quote, in the history of nickel in New Caledonia, a battle exists between the multinational and the local populations. With Tesla, with the new ownership, we have a compromise now that makes it possible to open the Goro plant but it remains fragile. And uh, by fragile, he means the Kanak workers and villagers have set the Goro mining facility on fire twice in the past decade. The road to the mine is still littered with the remains of burnt cars and tires from the uprising in late 2020 and early 2021. Local opposition to the mine draws both from political concerns and environmental fears. And that brings us up to the mine's current owners, Prony Resources. This is a consortium that is majority owned by New Caledonian interests, including the provincial government, mine workers, and local members of the community. Prony Resources is promising to halve its carbon emissions by 2030 and become carbon neutral 10 years after that. Waste from the plant, which is currently held in a tailings dam as a toxic sludge, will be filtered and transformed into a less corrosive dry waste. The dirty coal that powers the processing plant will be replaced by a large collection of solar panels, according to Prony executives. Dennis Lustelet, the chief sustainability officer for Prony Resources, said in an interview, Clearly we had work to do to show that safety and sustainability are our top priorities. Even one small accident is too much. As Prony Resources sees it, the mine is helping employ Canex who might otherwise struggle to find jobs. 
about 40% of Canuck youth are unemployed. Even though Canucks can attend university in France, few indigenous people have advanced degrees. And that's not to say everything is on equal ground. The racial divide at Goro is apparent. The head of Prony Resources is white and grew up in France, and most of the mine's top managers are also white. The drivers and laborers are mainly Canuck. The Tesla deal with Prony announced in October 2021 was greeted with jubilation by Canuck political leaders who say that it will force Goro to adhere to the high standards promised to them. Rock Wamitan, the president of New Caledonia's Congress, said in an interview, now we can sleep tranquilly because we know the whole world is watching to make sure that we take green nickel seriously. He added, the Tesla deal made that happen. Though there is still a long way to go before nickel extraction can be seen as anything even resembling a green and sustainable process, Goro still depends on an inherently dangerous process to produce nickel. The conjoining of acid and slurry at great heat and pressure. First, giant excavators, loaders, and trucks running on fossil fuels need to scoop up the earth and carry it away. Then the soil slurry is fed into a coal-fired facility that uses high-pressure blasts of sulfuric acid at high temperature to extract nickel and cobalt. But the competitive advantage that Tesla stands to gain here is pretty remarkable. No other automaker is anywhere near being able to manufacture their own cells in-house, let alone being set up to source their own raw battery materials straight from the mine. Don't forget that Tesla owns a lithium deposit in Nevada that they haven't even started to exploit yet. We're going to see a lot more of this kind of business approach over the years to come as Tesla continues to grow and gains even more money and resources to throw around. No middlemen involved, every material coming straight from the source according to Tesla standards, and every component manufactured in-house by Tesla or Tesla subsidiaries. Complete control over their product, their production costs, and their margins. When we talk about getting the price down for lithium-ion batteries and electric cars on the whole, this is how we do it. This is the only way to do it, and that's why Tesla are the leaders. Hopefully you all learned something today. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up today and let us know if you like this style of content. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up, it's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you wanna to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.